An IQ test is a test designed to measure people's intelligence. The questions that psychologists put on intelligence tests require examinees to think and solve problems. These tests produce a score called an IQ, which used to be an abbreviation for intelligence quotient, but no longer stands for anything. There are many different types of questions that can appear on an intelligence test. This is because any task that requires thought and mental effort will tap into intelligence to some extent. The best intelligence tests will consist of a variety of tasks, which allow different strengths to be demonstrated on the test. There is no task that is always the best for measuring intelligence, but there are some tasks that are more effective than others. Regardless of which tasks a psychologist puts into an intelligence test, what matters is how well the task requires a person to think, not the surface appearance of the task. IQ tests measure intelligence, which is a general ability to think, reason, and solve problems. For 120 years, psychologists have created these tests, and in that time, thousands of studies have been published showing that these tests do indeed measure how well a person solves problems. The best evidence for this is that scores on an intelligence test predict how well a person does in real-life situations that require thinking and problem-solving. This includes schooling, the workplace, and other everyday settings. If intelligence test scores only measure a person's test-taking ability, then these predictions wouldn't be possible. But what we see is that people who score better on the tests are more likely to obtain higher grades, earn a college degree, hold prestigious jobs, earn a patent, and publish in scholarly or creative outlets. All of these achievements require intelligence, and the tests tap into that ability. The largest difference between the Riot and other intelligence tests is that the Riot is administered fully online. Most intelligence tests are administered face-to-face -face by a psychologist or another trained professional. Some tests can also be administered through video calls, although this often requires some preparation beforehand, such as sending copies of the test stimuli to the examinee. There are some computer-administered intelligence tests that are given with proctors in educational settings, but most intelligence tests in the 21st century are administered in person. The RIOT truly stands out as the best fully online administered intelligence test in the world. A test is considered valid if it accurately measures the construct it's intended to assess. In the case of the riot, that would be intelligence. Validating a test requires gathering different types of data that provide evidence regarding what the test measures. This can be data about how test items or scores interrelate to one another, or how they correlate with outside variables like school grades. It can also involve statistical analyses showing that the items are not biased. From the beginning, the RIOT team's goal has been to create a scientifically valid test that is administered fully online. We have employed different strategies to achieve that goal. One strategy is to build on earlier test validation research. Most of the subtest formats in the RIOT appear on earlier tests and often have decades of research behind them. We also collect validation data as we build the test and from examinees after the test launches. All the validity evidence regarding the riot is compiled into a technical manual for the test that is available to users and scientists. Non-technical descriptions of much of the validation data will also be made available to the public on the website. Lastly, we plan on making the riot's validation data available to scientists and others who wish to verify our analyses and conduct independent research of their own. That research will be monitored, and the results will inform future revisions of the riot to ensure that it is the best measure of intelligence it can be. Anyone with an internet connection can take the riot. However, the target population for the first version of the test is U.S.-born adults who speak English as their native language. People from other groups can take the riot, but their scores will be calculated using data from the target group. In the future, there will be versions of the riot for other English-speaking countries and, potentially, versions tailored for other groups and languages as well. 
Most websites claiming to offer intelligence tests have questions and tests that are not professionally developed, and there's no evidence whatsoever that they produce meaningful scores. They confuse test takers and give online testing a bad reputation. But there is nothing inherently invalid about an online intelligence test if it is properly administered and designed. Psychologists know this because some high-quality tests, especially in education settings, are administered completely by computer in a proctored setting. The RIOT team's goal is to meet the standards that professionally developed traditional tests meet, but in the online environment. We also want to modernize the online test-taking space and make the test-taking process as easy as possible for everyone involved. Intelligence tests have existed for 120 years, and many excellent ones are on the market. The riot will be less expensive, faster, and more convenient than traditional intelligence tests. We expect the level of measurement error to be similar to what's seen on traditional tests. Many of the subtest formats and tasks on the riot are similar to tasks found on traditional intelligence tests. For the user, the biggest difference is that they will be taking the test on a computer instead of in person. To some people, the questions on the riot subtest may seem irrelevant to intelligence. For example, the vocabulary subtest asks examinees whether they know the definition of different words. The abstract matching subtest asks examinees which of two images more closely resembles a target image. Tasks like these can seem trivial to some people, but it is not the surface appearance of a test question that matters in an intelligence test. Rather, it is the underlying mental process that the question taps into that matters. A vocabulary question measures a person's ability to pick up knowledge from their general environment because most words that people know are learned from hearing them in conversation. The abstract matching subtest is a good measure of intelligence because the quick judgment the task requires is a measure of processing speed, an important component to intelligence. The Riot team has carefully chosen all 15 subtests so that people have many opportunities to demonstrate their intelligence. Having a lot of different tasks on the Riot ensures that its IQ scores do not overly favor one type of ability. The Riot is ideal for low to moderate stakes assessments of intelligence, but not for high stakes scenarios with significant consequences. For example, the Riot is not appropriate for diagnosing people with a disability, but a counselor may administer the Riot as part of a series of tests to a client in order to help determine which type of therapy to administer. For high stakes situations, an intelligence test administered face to face is still the best option. In other situations, the riot is an option that some may choose for its cost effectiveness, convenience, efficiency, or breadth of information. The riot team sees the test as being appropriate for clinical, employment, educational, research, or other situations. There are a variety of different ways to prevent or reduce cheating on an online test. One of the most important is to have a large pool of items. For some subtests, we can randomly generate hundreds or even thousands of possible test items. Even if some of the test items are leaked, they can be easily replaced. A large item pool like that also means that a single leaked item doesn't impact the test much because most examinees may not see that item. There are other methods for preventing cheating that take advantage of online technology. For example, we can keep track of when people click away from their web browser, track users with their camera, and flag users when they leave the test excessively. However, despite our best efforts, it is impossible to entirely prevent cheating on the riot, which is true for traditional tests too. The best a test developer can do is to reduce the likelihood of cheating, and that is our goal. You might have heard intelligence researchers talk about G, which raises a simple question. What is G? At its core, G is a way to summarize groups of variables and data. It comes from a statistical method called factor analysis, which identifies which variables are more closely related to one another. For example, if someone does well on a math test, a vocabulary test, and a puzzle, 
Factor analysis might show that scores on these tests are similar enough that they belong in the same group. Usually, factor analysis shows that all cognitive tests belong to the same group or factor. This shared factor is what we call G. Factor analysis was first developed in 1904 by Charles Spearman, and even in his first study using it, he found that all cognitive tests could be combined into a general factor, which he named G. Spearman believed that G represented general intelligence, and many researchers still agree with this idea today. However, G is just the product of a statistical analysis. Factor analysis by itself does not prove that intelligence exists. To demonstrate that G represents something real, such as intelligence, scientists need additional data. Over the past century, studies have shown that G is associated with important life outcomes like health, income, and career success. G also relates to biological variables such as brain size and efficiency. These findings suggest that G isn't just the number from a test; it's connected to how our brains work and how we perform in life. Colleges and universities in most countries are not giving tests labeled as intelligence tests to their applicants. Many of these tests are called aptitude or achievement tests instead. However, any task that requires a person to think or solve problems will tap into intelligence to some extent. So even though the universities and test creators aren't calling them intelligence tests, college admissions tests still function as intelligence tests anyway. In fact, in research, many psychologists use scores on college admissions tests as a substitute for IQ scores. This means that colleges that select students on the basis of their test scores are selecting students on the basis of their intelligence, whether the colleges recognize that or not. Intelligence tests are some of the most accurate psychological tests in existence. Intelligence tests are excellent at predicting academic and work performance, and provide insight into neuropsychological functioning. However, this does not mean the tests are perfect. Every psychological test has a margin of error, and that includes intelligence tests. Generally, the longer a test is, the smaller its margin of error will be. Full-length, professionally developed tests will have a margin of error of about plus or minus two to three IQ points. Additionally, it is important to recognize that even the best tests can be inaccurate for specific individuals. If the test taker is distracted, hungry, or in distress, then the test will likely underestimate their intelligence. That is why psychologists always state that important, life-changing decisions should never be based solely on a test score. Professionals also recommend gathering corroborating evidence in order to determine whether the test score accurately reflects a person's abilities. That being said, it's important to reiterate that intelligence tests are some of the most accurate tests in existence. They are not infallible, but anyone who thinks they are not good enough for use must also throw out mental health, personality, and other tests. It's also important to recognize that eliminating intelligence tests will not eliminate the decisions they inform. If intelligence tests never existed, then there would still need to be a way to determine admission to academic programs or hiring for jobs. And other alternatives are not as accurate as intelligence tests are. The Flynn effect is the tendency for IQ scores to increase over time by about three IQ points per decade. This was first noticed in the 1930s, but James Flynn popularized the phenomenon in the 1980s, and the authors of the Bell Curve named it after him in 1994. The Flynn effect is a puzzling phenomenon because it implies a level of increased intelligence that is simply unbelievable. Three IQ points per decade would mean that the average person a century ago would score at a level that would place them in the bottom two percent of intelligence today, and make them at risk for a diagnosis of a mild intellectual disability. Projecting back even further leads to some absurd conclusions, such as the idea that everyone in Shakespeare's time would have been so severely disabled that they could not have used the restroom or mastered spoken language. That simply isn't possible. Psychologists have learned much about the increase in IQ scores since James Flynn brought greater attention to it. We understand now that the increase in abilities is not based on general intelligence, but on other cognitive abilities that contribute to IQ, such as fluid reasoning or pattern recognition. 
It is also understood now that there is not a single cause to the Flynn effect, but one important cause is increased education. Flynn described how education teaches a person to think abstractly and to see the world through what he calls scientific spectacles. This mode of abstract thinking leads people to search for the rules behind intelligence test questions, which greatly increases how many questions they can answer correctly. These scientific spectacles are a great way to improve problem solving, but they are not as apparent outside of testing situations. This is why IQ scores can go up without the massive increase in intelligence that the Flynn effect would imply. Intelligence tests that are professionally developed are definitely not culturally biased. It has been standard practice since at least the 1980s for test creators to screen their tests for bias and to eliminate any biased items. Additionally, modern test developers are acutely aware of the need to write test items that are culturally appropriate, a standard that is maintained throughout the professional development of an IQ test. No test is appropriate for all test takers though. Professional test developers are very careful to state who the appropriate examinees are. For example, the American version of the Riot Intelligence Test is developed for adults born in the United States who speak English as a native language. The test has been screened for bias and was found to have no bias against African American or Hispanic American examinees, but the test has not been screened for bias against immigrants or non-native English speakers because the test is not designed for these groups. The rule in professional test development is you screen for bias against people who belong to the group the test is designed for, not for anyone out there in the whole world. Intelligence tests that are individually administered by a psychologist in person are still the gold standard for measuring intelligence. Those tests are the best choice for high-stakes decisions, which have long-term or irreversible consequences. The riot is not meant to replace those tests, but rather to serve as an option for medium or low-stakes situations. These are decisions that are either reversible or do not have long-lasting consequences. For example, a counselor may use the riot as part of a series of psychological tests to determine which type of therapy might be most appropriate. That is a decision that can be changed later on. However, the riot is not appropriate for diagnosing a person with a mental health disorder because that is an important long-term consequence for the test taker. The riot does not replace face-to-face -face testing for important situations, but is an option for clinicians, employers, researchers, or people who are just curious about IQ.